Hi, my name is Janet Garcia from EmpowerToChange.com and in, in this tutorial I'm gonna use an image editing software that you can use, anyone can use, it's free and you have access to it via the web. The program that I'm gonna use is called Pixelr. As you can see here, it's the website. So write down the address that I have here. And uh, this program is really neat because it works just like a Photoshop. I know that Photoshop is very expensive, but this one has lots of the functionalities that you can find in Photoshop. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly create a simple banner for your blog, for example, and brand it with either uh, your picture or a logo. So this is the image that we are going to create. To create a new image from scratch, all you have to do is click on this button, create a new image, and if you want to open an existing image, then you would click on this other option and browse to the location where your image is at. If you want to create your banner for the 2011 WordPress theme, the header banner must be at least 1000 pixels wide and 288 pixels high. You can create several banners and have them change at random every time the visitors change pages on your on your web page or refresh the, the page. But it's up to you. You can have it also as just one image all the time. So let's start by creating a new document at the right size. In this other window we'll enter the dimensions we want. Here in the presets drop down box you have some options but the size we want is a custom size. So we'll enter 1000 for the width and 288 for the height. You would take this transparent option if you want to start the new document with a transparent background. This is useful for images that has a irregular shape. For the banner, we'll use a solid background, so I will leave this option unselected. And then let's click OK. On the Tools panel, we have our editing tools, like the pencil, the fill tool, or the, or the paint bucket, the brush tool, the selection tools, etc. It is very important that you get familiarized with these tools and its options. This middle panel is the canvas, or your drawing board. This is where you're going to design your image or your logo. On the right hand side, we'll find three panels. The navigator, which shows you a representation of your actual image. You can use this panel also to zoom in and out of your image. In the layers panel, you will have access to all layers that compose your image. Think of layers as transparent films, like the ones used in anatomy books, where each film has a picture of any particular organ, and all films together compose the entire human body. Here on the third panel, this is the history panel. Every time you execute a step, it is recorded here so that you can go a step back even to the beginning in case you may make a, a mistake or you didn't like the results of your last step you can always go back. Here in the canvas you can zoom in and out of your image by entering the percentage in this box or you can expand or readjust the canvas panel by grabbing it from the corner. The first thing that we're going to do is to fill the background with our blue. To fill the entire background, we'll select the paint bucket tool or press the letter G. Now we need to select the color that we want. 
and for that we double click here to set the main color the color selector will open and this is the color wheel the outer ring lets you select the hue and the inner square lets you select the saturation for the selected color or hue since I already know the blue that I want, I will enter here the RGB numbers. RGB stands for red, green, and blue. And each color ranges from 0 to 255. So my blue is 69 for red, 104 for green, and 150 for blue. Notice that my blue shows as the selected color. Now with the paint bucket still selected, I'm going to click anywhere in the white canvas to fill it out with my new color. Now we're going to bring the yellow border on top. But first, let me say this blue in case I want to use it later. I will click on these little icons. Notice that the blue moved down to one of the available spots. Now let's select the yellow. Again, double click on the set main color icon as we did before. This time I will enter 249 for red, 169 for green, and 0 for blue and then click OK. I will also save the color by clicking on this little icon here again as we did with the blue. But this time I will save it to the next available spot. Now we can switch between the yellow and the blue by just clicking on its color swatch. So let's create a new layer for the yellow border that I want to make and to keep it separate from the blue background color in case I want to go back and work with the yellow border only. To create a new layer, you can either go to the menu and select Layer, New Layer. Or on the Layers panel, click on the New Layer icon, like so. A new layer is created above the blue background layer. Anything I do on this layer won't affect the layer below. To create the yellow border, we need to use the Marquee tool or press the letter M, which is this tool here. Let's click on it. Then on the canvas, click and drag to select the area that you want to fill with the yellow. In this case, I'm going to select this area. Now that I have it selected, Let's select the paint bucket again, making sure that we will have the yellow as the main color. And now let's click inside the selection. To deselect the selection, either choose from the menu Edit, Deselect All, or just press Ctrl D on your keyboard. Let's save our work in case something happens. Go to File save. Let's give it a name. I'm going to name it My Banner and select PXD Format. Selecting this format will preserve all layers and filters you apply to your image in case you want to go back and make changes to your file later on. It will preserve all layers intact. I will save this one to my desktop for now. Now I'm going to write my domain name in the lower area of the canvas. For this I need the text tool, which is the one with the letter A. So let's click on it. This box will appear in which you can type the content and select the font, its size, and the color. I will select the color black. Notice that the color display was the currently selected color, the last one that I used, which was the yellow. Once I click OK, notice that Pixlr 
place the text automatically on a new layer. To reposition the text, select the Move tool or press the letter V and click the text and drag it to position it. Now we need the Empower logo. Let's click on File, Open Image, and let's locate the image that we want to use. It will open in a new window or canvas, but we need it on our banner. All you need to do is drag the layer to the banner file. Now notice that it's too big, we need to resize it. Since the logo is in its own layer, we don't have to worry about the other components we have been working with. To select the logo, in order to resize it, select from the main menu Edit Free Transform. Notice that some handles and a box are turned on. To resize the image, click and drag any of the corner handles while pressing the Shift key to constrain its proportion and not distort the image. While the handles are on, you can drag the image around. When done, press Enter to commit to the changes. Now we need to move just the title to the right and a little bit up. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, we will duplicate the layer and then just erase the portion that we don't want. From the menu, select Layer, Duplicate Layer. Notice the Layers panel. We now have a duplicate for the logo. Now we will select just the guy with the lasso tool and delete it. Just click and drag with the lasso tool around the guy. And to finish the selection, let go on the mouse when you reach your starting point. This will close the selection automatically. From the menu, select Edit, Cut. This will erase the dude. It looks as if nothing happened, and that's because on the, on the other copy, it's, it's on the other layer, is below. On the Layers panel, you may turn the layer's visibility on or off by ticking this box. Now from the layer below, we will delete the title. So in one layer, we will have just the dude, and on the other, just the title. So let's repeat the process. As you can see, each portion now occupies a different layer. Now let's name the layers to keep us organized. To rename a layer, just double click on the layer name and type a new name and then click away. Now let's reposition the title the same way we did before. You may have to make the title smaller. Now save your work, click on File, Save, and leave the settings as before. This will override the previous saved image. Now let's export our completed logo. Go to File, Save, but this time we need to change the name of the image as it cannot have any spaces to send it to your website and then select another format. For the web, you may choose JPEG, PNG or PNG, or BMP. Select from the Format drop-down box any of the formats and see which one gives you or renders the smaller size, which is displayed above the OK button. But in this case, I will choose PNG the file size is small, 
and PNG is a lossless compression format, meaning that the quality of the image will be at the highest resolution possible. And then click OK and select where you want to save the image. Let's take a look at how our image will look. And that's it for now. I hope that you have learned a lot from this short video and uh, on upcoming videos I will show you more editing tips. This is Janet Garcia for EmpowerToChange.com. Have a great day.